Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your KZ Sportsman 266 fifth wheel. You guys have picked a cool little fifth wheel here. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, and get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple of things I want you to take into consideration. First, your slides. They're not out at the moment because I want to show you how to deploy them, but once them are out, you can see how much room you're going to re need regularly. Park accordingly so your slides can come in and out unhindered and preferably nothing hanging directly over top of them. And I want you to think about where your water and electricity are hooked up. Your water is going to go in here in the rear of your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Same thing with your power back here at the rear. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities. Our hitch guy is going to go over unhooking your fifth wheel hitch with you. Part of that is your landing leg hookup, which is right here on the front. That's going to allow you to level your unit. Once you got your unit level, we're going to go ahead and stabilize it. All the way around on your camp side, on the rear, are your power stabilizing jacks. Now, put a sticky bubble on the center of the front or the back side, preferably the off camp side, and make sure your unit's level before you do this. Once you got your unit level, you're just going to extend your stabilizing jacks. Here we, here we go. Now I do recommend jack pads. You only got to grab two for this one. Jack pads are going to protect your stabilizing jack's feet from dirt, debris, um, hot blacktop in the summer. As you'll see, sometimes they'll run down separately, one, one ahead of the other. But you're only going to run these down until they're taut. You don't want to lift your unit. You already have a level. Just remember, these are just stabilizing jacks. But yeah, pick you up a couple of those jack pads from our store. Remember, you do have a 10% off coupon you can use on the day of purchase. And anything that I mentioned you might want to pick up when you're going camping. So that one will stop nice and stable. It's no longer lifting. The other one, bring it down just until you're stable. Don't lift your unit. As soon as you feel it start to lift, stop your stabilizing jacks. Now you got your unit level. And we got it stable. Let's hook up your power and your water. Again, your power cord will be inside storage. 50 amp service right here. Plugged in the 50 down there. Should you need to plug into uh, 30 amp, there's a 30 to or 50 to 30. And if you need to go down, you can bring this 30 down to 110. Got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. Coming over here to your city water connect. Taking a hook this hose up with this water pressure regulator. Use this water pressure regulator when putting fluid into the unit. It's going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines inside your unit. You always want to use this when putting it into the unit. Once you get your hose hooked up, don't turn it on yet. We're going to go around to your campsite and find your hot water heater. Here's right in the middle. Open up access panel to your hot water heater. And all we're going to do at this point is return our rod and our drain plug. 
may have left this out from the last time you were camping. Go ahead and securely socket that in there. Make sure that's nice and closed. Then you can turn on your hose. Once your hose has been on for a little while, you're gonna come over up here to this pressure release valve. You're gonna pull on that. It's gonna release air, release air. So you get a nice steady flow of water coming out of here, then you know your hot water heater is full and can be turned on from inside. If your hot water is not working, come out here and look. This may be bubbled up. If it is, it's a reset button. Rarely happens, just press it back in. And down here you'll see an on-off switch. Should be set to off. So the only time you ever want to turn this on is if you're running just down to 110. And the other time you turn on your hot water heater from indoors. Now if you're camping and you dry docking, just gonna take potable water with you. Right here also on your campsite is your potable water tank. Non-pressurized, so you can just fill that up with a hose. Again, burp the air to your hot water lines. That'll still fill up for you. Once that's full, you can light it from indoors again. Just remember when using potable water, you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. Don't use your water pump when using city water, you're already pressurized. All right, we got our water and electricity hooked up. Let me walk you around the rest of the unit and show you a few other things. This is your furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. It'll get rather warm. Up here is a vent for your microwave. This is access panel to the back of your fridge. Your outdoor speakers and awning. We'll run that out here shortly. You do have a 110, couple 110s and a cable out here if you want to hook it table up and put a TV out here show you how to use your outdoor kitchen here it's secured in just as you're coming out look up underneath and get a hold of your propane cord pull that all the way out it'll lock in up here on both sides I'll use one for now and down underneath here's your quick connect LP Here's your sink. Hook this hose up here for this sink. Unhook. Now you will have to hand light this lighter, this uh, propane with a lighter. All right, as you're closing this back up also, push your propane hose back up underneath. Quick connect LP, outdoor fridge. Around the back of your unit, your ladder, go up and check your seams. Make sure caulk as needed. Keep your roof nice. I want to get a cover for your spare tire. Spare tire looks like it's still brand new, but I recommend getting a cover for that. We got those in our store as well. Satellite and cable hookup. Come around the back of your unit, your power. There's the extra door into the back part. Your black and gray tanks that we'll dump later. Your black tank flush we'll talk about later as well. You have this outdoor shower that will open up with your 751 key. And your propane tanks. Do you want to mention you do have a regulator on here? Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Open that side up. Up in the front, use a big storage area. And your last panel over here is going to have your battery. Check those terminals now and then. Make sure your posts are nice and tight. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's take a look on the inside. First thing I want to take note of is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway. Come into your unit up underneath the panel here. Is where your awning goes in and out. And that's where you turn your interior lighting on. Alright, also up underneath here is going to be my slide control. Push it away from you. Throw on your slide out. I want to check that door as you come back in and make sure that it hasn't popped open so that when that slide goes out, it doesn't catch the hand. I'll rip that door off. Same thing when you leave it. Make sure that door is nice and secure. I wanted you to hear this noise. 
it's okay to hear there for a second or two. It's just the slide mechanism setting itself. Allows it to stop it better. So you have a few of those controls up underneath there with the 110. Coming over to your stove. Simply turn this to light. When your gas is on, that'll light up. Turn your light on. Fan. Self-explanatory microwave. Let's talk about your Nordic cold fridge. We're turning it on, we're turning it to auto. Auto means that when you're plugged in, it's running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it starts running off gas. Or you can go switch strictly to gas, and it'll be running off gas. Over here is where you set the temperature from 1 to 5 being coldest. Down below your fridge, access panel to your fuses and breaker box. It looks like you have a handful of 15s underneath there, uh, 20. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. On your back wall back here is your thermostat. Simply turn it to heat. Just heard it kick on. Turn it to a fan, hear that kick on. Turn it to air, hear that kick on. Just set this at the desired temperature. Or you can just run a fan. Coming in your bathroom, main thing I want to mention in here, we'll turn on lights and a fan. Don't need that. Your 110 with GFCI reset is in here. And then here's where you check your brand new battery, tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Here's where you turn on your water heater if using gas. And here's where you turn it on if you're using electricity. Also want to mention you do have a hand crank and you can shut off that fan from here as well. Plumbing to maintain. Just keep an eye on the plumbing underneath your sink. Just like you would at your home. Maintain that. Show you quickly how your table becomes a bed. Turn on a few more lights around here. So this feet are in here individually. Just wiggle it. Sometimes they'll stay in, sometimes they'll come out. Good to show you both. Take them off. Lay them down here. There are a couple lips. Looks like they put some aftermarket stronger ones there. Set this here and bring your cushions up here for extra bedding. Reverse the process. Put the legs in the bottom. Doesn't matter which end goes in which because both ends are tapered the same. Over here, if we remove the Velcro back cushions, I like to stand in the middle, it gives you better leverage. Open up your legs, pull it towards you. Lay the back end down, and you've got a big sleeping area. Simply reverse the process. You're back to be on a sofa. Do what I mentioned back here on the floor. On the bottom here is your 12 volt carbon dioxide detector. The reason I mentioned it's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, disconnect your battery. Keep this from running your battery down if you're not plugged in anywhere. Sound system. One thing I wanted to mention on the TV is when you get to the campsite, Press that button until that red light comes on before you scan for your digital channels. That's a digital channel enhancer. It'll allow you to pick up a lot more channels. Jensen DVD, CD, AM, FM, Zone, Bluetooth. Really nice sound system. Coming up into your bedroom. We got your bedroom slide. Let me turn this light on here. 
to lift. Oops, I'm sorry, press, press down to extend. You can open up your wardrobe slide. This is already prepped for TV. Try to attach that. There's your cable and uh, 110 hookup up there. Now you got your wardrobe slide closet. Gives you a little more space around the bed, a little storage. Up here you do have a 110. Reading light. And your own AC back here. Control that from here. Looks like it's AC heat strip. Looks like it goes red too, so. Alright, I'm gonna bring this slide back in. Oh, press press up for in. That covers everything on the inside. We're gonna act like we're leaving the campsite now and close it up. Before closing all the slides, make sure there's nothing on the side of that bed over there. Nothing's going to hinder this from coming in or breaking anything. Before bringing this slide in, we're going to go through and make sure all the lights are shut off. Same thing in the bathroom. Now we're also going to make sure nothing's going to hinder this slide from coming in. I want to make sure, mainly, that this is closed. Everything else looks like it'll be out of the way. I'm going to come up underneath here and bring this in real. So I did want to show you that on your awning, you're just going to want to run that out until that flat falls down to 90 degrees. Once that's all the way down, that's how far you're going to run it. So I'm going to bring that in real quick. All right, so we brought in all of our slides. I'm going to tell you a couple important things. Close your door, lock your door, deadbolt your door. Lift and turn your handle, your door is secure. I'm going to bring up the steps. I believe the bottom goes first, then the middle, and everything else lifts up inside like that. Here comes your hot water heater. You can bleed the lines out here. And release your hot water drain. Be careful, you're gonna have hot water coming out of there. You're gonna come around and you're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks. 